All right, guys, sadly, this chicken is not on the eggs <laughs> that we put up here. So that's a bummer. <sighs> well, Missy, I guess you can go back to your flock. <laughs> she just spends, all, she's taking a good old dust bath. Look at that. She's enjoying herself. Well, since I can't get this one to go broody. Oh, she's off the nest. She was on the nest earlier and I thought, oh, maybe she'll go broody. Because <sighs> there's a beautiful clutch of eggs she was sitting on. Oh, well. There is still time for somebody to go broody. Come on, somebody. You can do this for me. And I always have my incubator, which is a lot of fun too, but come on. I know you're not gonna go broody. <laughs> East Raggers are not known for going broody, for sure. <laughs> come on, Buttercup. I need you. It is really warm out today, but we're supposed to have a cold front slamming in, which usually means severe weather, which they're calling for, so. I have emptied, or I am in the process of emptying the rain barrels on the garden, and I'm gonna try to repair this one. Should be simple, all I have to do is replace this. It cracked right here in the storm, so. However, as you guys know, nothing seems simple on the homestead. <laughs> okay, let's see. Maybe this will be. Oh, praise Jesus. Hey, that was pretty easy, you guys. Yes. I love easy. Okay, let's see if that worked. So now I'm gonna tip it up and it should come out. Let's see. Well, maybe it's off. Maybe that's the off position. Let's see, let's see. Yes! Victory! All right, this one is fixed. So this is my main barrel hooked up to the rain gutter where we have most of the rain coming down there. And then um, this is my overflow barrel. So it just has a little thing in here. The screen somehow came out, so I need to replace that so it won't fill with mosquitoes. But let me get it back to the right position. Okay, so it just goes from that barrel to this one. So that gives me over a hundred, a little over a hundred gallons of water every time it rains. Unfortunately, in Dallas, Texas, I have learned that it flash floods, so really I think the way to have a good water source for your garden in the drought times is to have a huge water tank, which they don't allow in our city. You can only, I can't remember how many gallons, maybe 300 gallons of water that you're limited to have collected, and of course you have to put your rain barrels, like that's why I've got them in back. You can't put them in front and we're on a corner so that causes a problem and you have to have them screened with shrubbery there are all sorts of little silly rules but um that's okay that's nothing compared to some people's restrictions so i'm good with that all right i've got to just empty this rain barrel and i'm going to see if i can go fix the one in the front too i think this one would be a little bit harder fix because there's a Part of the nut is inside the rain barrel, so I think I'm gonna have to get into this one. 
Okay, it has some in it. <laughs> That's good. See, it just was cracked right there. But obviously, okay, not bad. So let me empty it onto the garden and then, of course it's about to rain, so. <laughs> Is this fix also gonna be this easy? Wow, it's my day. You guys, it's my day. <laughs> it's a good, good day. He talked me into a plastic one, which I wasn't sure about, but it is a lot cheaper. And if the metal one's gonna break, I'm gonna have to replace it every year, then why not replace it with something cheaper? So I think that one. Uh, okay, yeah, that is not very much pressure dribbling out of there to fill up the whole hose and get to the garden. So I might try this one, I got this one too, because that's what's on my other barrel and seems to give me more pressure. But I don't have the connection right, so I'll have to go back and get another connector for that. So, that's okay though, at least now. I'm storing water again, right? <laughs> Hallelujah, homestead victory. A couple of things I do need to do with this rain barrel is level it up, it's kind of leaning. You guys can see that. Yeah, kind of leaning. And um, I need to make this bigger. This is the overflow spout. I need to make it a lot bigger because when the torrential rains come down, it's just not coming out of here fast enough. So it backs up. It backs up along this gutter and it dumps rain right here at this kind of low juncture. And this is where I have my aquaponics. <laughs> so then that floods. I mean, it fills up October flowing, which is not a huge deal. So, but yeah, I need to get that done. Look, the bees are just having so much fun. It's so much fun to come out here and watch them. Is there a storm coming, you guys? They know, right? Hey, you guys, we do something special in our family. We have a Jehovah Jireh board, which is God provides. The name of God in the Bible, God provides. When he provided the ram for Abraham, it's the first time it's used, the ram for sacrifice, if you know that story, instead of Isaac. Anyway, so every year we do one. Last year was we're wide open for what you have for us, Lord. And so we put every, kind of everything that's happened in the year as it happens, um, healing, um, giving up addictions, prophecies, different, um, it, graduation. <laughs> so all sorts of victories. We put victories on there that have happened during the year. So it's time for us to make a new one. We're a little late because the years got moving, but we need to wait for a while to, to have some victories on the books for, Jan, for 2023, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're gonna make a new one together, join us. So we've got a blank slate, you guys, and the word for this year is... So standing in expectation. We are just standing, waiting to see what God is gonna do this year. We're standing expectation and excitement. So whenever we get discouraged and we see a mountain that we just is not moving, that it just seems impossible, or situation, financial, just anything that just seems impossible to move and we get discouraged, then we can literally come 
and take off. We can literally see years of how God has provided and been faithful and moved those mountains that we didn't think would move. So yeah, it's really encouraging. posture of <laughs> concentration. <laughs> what are you drawing, Eli? I'm drawing a drum set. Very cool. Are you going to put words beside it? Um, probably. Probably. Yeah. So we put lots of things that God has done with us so far this year just in two months. Um, he gave me a prophecy that said in a verse that said, I've given you keys to the kingdom of heaven, Hebrews 16, 19. What you bind on earth is bound in heaven and what you loose on earth is loosed in heaven, meaning heaven is in agreement with that. And he said to me, I, you have been given authority use it and keys to the kingdom. So that is my job to use my authority given by Christ to heal and tell other people about mm -hmm. his joyful experience in our lives. And we also, we did our little food from the garden and this is kale mm -hmm. um, that we all collaborated on. So it's Yum. really super cool. And then um, dad's foot healed. So our dad's um, surgery is went well and everything. And then we've got some exciting things. I joined a new church. Mm -hmm. um, I conquered my fear of driving on the highway. And I have, so we call my car the Black Pearl, the bully of the boulevard, the scourge of the highway. <laughs> um, and that is, I've just owned up to that now. <laughs> uh -huh. And one note about this, if you pray for your kids to take on their faith all on their own instead of adopting your faith, they might just do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm a member of this new church and it's super amazing. Um, and then this is my... My most recent um, theater, production. theater production, thank you. Mm -hmm. And so it's got, um, in the story, uh, one of the drinks is like poisoned, and that's how like the murder mystery begins. So I have a little bottle of cyanide, and it's very, very creepy and spooky. And, <laughs> um, and then I'm currently working on Annie, so I think once, um, once I've done that in a couple of months that I'm going to add it on somewhere and say tomorrow <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> yes and then Eli's drum said he did a drum recital and he did the song hello my name is so of course adding that and I'm sure my sons have things to add but they're gonna have to add their own when when they come over we'll get this down and say all right here's your marker mm -hmm. <laughs> go for it this is a perfect opportunity to remind you, I did these backwards, and I just wanted to remind you that your art doesn't have to be perfect, especially something like this. Um, because what did you say, Mom? Um, perfection is the killer of creativity. Exactly. <laughs> and here comes the severe weather. They weren't kidding. Woo. That was some storm last night. We had um, a few branches down and then lots of little ones. We got to clean up. Now my side yard, you guys, is just kind of full with, with unedible ground cover. So a friend of mine is trying to talk me into making it into a food forest, but I don't know if I could really keep up with it. But then I saw this and I thought, hmm, look at this beautiful, huge dandelion. We're definitely gonna eat some of this tonight <laughs> with our salad, with our kale salad. So I don't know, maybe she has something here. 
would be nice to have a whole side yard of food. My garden fared pretty good though. I can't believe the PVC pipes all stayed in, so that was awesome. Just a couple of fence sections. need to be repaired that one but that gave me great incentives I really need to get this side fence started on because it is not gonna last long you guys so we're gonna work on that today I just noticed my caged collards Sorry guys, I put them on here so the rabbits wouldn't eat um, eat the babies, but I think we're good now. <laughs> You've grown out of your cage. Since they're outside the fence, that is why I have my front yard fence. Because it has chicken wire right here, halfway up, and it keeps the rabbits out. Because without it all that wonderful kale would be rabbit food. <laughs> this is the part I hate. It's just too. not my forte. No, you're so much better at it. Exact measurement, just not my thing. <laughs> yeah. This time I mapped it on my garden journal, so I'll remember where it is. <laughs> and just like that, he's got them in place for the front yard garden fence. It's so long a space of time when we do it that we kind of have to redo it all over again. So we got two fence. Defense. Panels. Defense. <laughs> Defense. Done. <laughs> yes, homestead victory. Now you guys, I didn't always do my front yard fence this way. Those of you that have been watching for a while know that I did my front yard fence first out of pallets, free pallets. Because like I said, I couldn't afford to the lumber to build a fence to keep the rabbits out. And the fence is essential to keep the rabbits out. So building a fence out of pallets is not for the faint of heart. And I definitely needed some help getting the boards off of the pallets. Um, my sons helped me and my hubby helps me and my friend Sam helps me. So I got a lot of help with that. So this is much easier and um, I think ultimately is gonna last a lot longer than the pallets did. Alright, big homestead victory. I'm on my way to get a new, new side of my fence. <laughs> so my fence was not the only one that had trouble. So the fence fell onto the beehive, but thank goodness it didn't knock the beehive over. So that's good. We'll have to repair this. This is on my um, sister's property though, where I have some beehives. Since this hen is clearly not interested in sitting on the nest, to show you guys. She even scooted the eggs over. See, there are the eggs. <laughs> so she can have a little bear place to sit. <laughs> yeah, no broody. No broody hen here. Come on, girl, let's rejoin the flock. That's it. Back in there. <laughs> Good girl. Just being so bold. You're over the line. Good thing Nala's not out here. Put everyone in their place. <laughs> Eli is hard at work fixing up the fire pit for tonight's fun. <laughs> we need to have some fires while it's still nice and cool. Because <laughs> in the summer, in Texas, no one feels like a fire. <laughs> it's still, still not even that cold. It's like summer weather almost. It, 
It is. And it's winter. It's not even like yeah, it's winter. Yeah, that would be fun tonight. I'm looking forward to it. There's nothing I love more than family around a campfire. 